As we talk about that impact that we've been seeing today, the recovery process still in the early stages. Western North Carolina was hit hard, as we all know, with entire towns now buried under mud and debris. Here are three things you need to know this morning, as Helene has now claimed at least 223 lives in our country. Hundreds more are still missing. Power out for upwards of 390,000 in the Carolinas. Now, crews do say that number is expected to go down this weekend and the IRS is offering tax relief for those impacted. May 1st is now the deadline for anything tax related in the Carolinas. We do have more details on our website. What's going on guys? Hey, I want to come back to you and I wanted to bring you a video about what is happening in Western North Carolina. What happened and what is happening? Um, I live, I don't know if anyone knows, but I live um, not too far pretty much right at within 20 miles of the um, North Carolina, South Carolina border. And um, where I'm at, we did not see the flooding that they got in Nashville, thank God. But uh, we were hit pretty hard. We just got power back. And, and, and there are some still without power now from that storm. But, uh, you know, Asheville... They got hit. Now, Hendersonville, Edneyville, Chimney Rock, Bat Cave, Lake Lure, they got hit hard. And I kind of wanted to bring attention to, to that. Um, you know, especially the smaller towns out there. And I'm going to show you some footage of that in a second. But um, the lack of response that our government has given these folks they're offering people seven hundred and fifty dollars that's it it's all the government's offering and again FEMA is in a lot of in a lot of cases has been completely absent and when they have been around they've been um they've been hindering actually hindering finding people, finding bodies, the recovery effort. Uh, but guys, I want to show you some of the, some of the, some of the video of what happened about 40 minutes up the road from where I live in Nashville. You know, again, they're, they're just over an hour away from, from me, but um, yeah, I mean, just complete devastation. And again, man, they had no problem paying out almost two billion dollars to do clothes and and house and give give thirty five hundred bucks a month or whatever to illegals. But they offer one time seven hundred fifty dollars to people of Western North Carolina. This right here is unreal. But guys, man, if you would please like. Subscribe and leave a comment down below. Thanks. This is as far as we can go into the Lake Lure area along 6474 near the Pool Creek Picnic Park on Lake Lure. If you take a look behind me, the Lakeside Chapel on Saturday, it was underwater all the way up to the cross. When you get there, you're just like, you want to cry. It's like, what do you do? You know, where do you go? 
You just stay and look around. This is stuff laying everywhere. Dale Shields has hauled truckload after truckload of debris from Lake Lure. A bird's eye view reveals the devastation. When you get to right above the Chimney Rock Park entrance, the river's about 300 foot wide. There's no road. It's gone. All the houses from there up is gone. The bridge, the flower and bridge, gone. Government agencies, with the help of Shields, other contractors and community volunteers like William Smith, are slowly clearing Rutherford and Polk County roads. You might go 10 feet and cut three trees. You might go a mile and cut 10. But everybody just pulled together and tried to get out. Smith shared some of the damage he'd seen on Cedar Creek Road and to Highway 64 at Rock Springs. We can check. T.J. Brady is on leave from the South Carolina Helicopter Aquatic Rescue Team. I've been deployed to Hurricane Harvey, all the things at the coast, and I think the devastation here outweighs anything that I've ever been to in my life. That Guys, there was Jimmy Rock in Lake Laura, North Carolina. And, uh, you know, we, we have got to be honest. There is something going on here. I mean, again, the government response has not been good at all. Something's going on here. FEMA is not around. And when they have been around, they've been trying to sabotage uh, rescue and recovery efforts. You know, that we have truly got to be asked, what is happening? What is happening? Again, you can call me a conspiracy nut, whatever. But Western North Carolina is very, very deep red. And, uh, you know, again, the election's coming up within a month. And there's already been news reports where it's going to affect the election, the outcome. It's possible. And again, North Carolina is North Carolina's purple. They are a battleground state. So that's that's one thing. And we have to understand Trump, you know, they drug him through the mud. They tried to give people to turn against him with these core battles and everything else. And people have they stood behind him. He has grown in support. And then, then they tried to assassinate the man. They tried to assassinate him twice within two months. And what happened? Well, he just grew his support. And so again, we, you, we, you can call me a conspiracy nut. But if you step back far enough and you look at it, you know, yeah, it doesn't look too crazy. And, and again, everything I've read, we've been controlling the weather for some time, been able to. I'm, I'm going to put um, a few different, uh, a clip, you know, about three or four minutes long. I'm going to put it up in a few minutes talking about that. But we have truly got to understand something is happening here. Something is happening here. And, and again, FEMA has done nothing but try to, you know, again, kind of, kind of, Sabotage operations. Again, if you're not going to help, at least don't screw things up. Let those little Kenji boys do what they got to do. Again, you've heard the old song by Hank Williams back, you know, 40 whatever years ago. Country boy can't survive. Well, again, we're talking about Western North Carolina. And these guys, they can survive. They know what to do, so at least get out of their way if you're not going to help. But uh, anyways, guys, I wanted to also let people know, number one, there is a, um, there, there is a high concentration of lithium in Western North Carolina, as well as the purest forms of, uh, of course, crystal. And we, we, we've got to understand this. I don't think many people know that um, there was already flooding up there beforehand. I'm going to show you a video clip showing the flooding that was taking place the day before 
a Helene even hit. Watch this. It is noon on Thursday, and the hurricane winds of Friday morning and rain is not even here yet, so this is pretty crazy. Bridge is currently at head height, so five, five and a half feet to go. So this bridge, if it truly does come up 10 feet, is going to get almost covered to the top with water. Just looking at the bridge we just talked about, Biltmore Village is going to get covered in probably four feet of water. So these sandbags, while they might help, I think the water is going to be very close to entering above that brick right there. This is the road leading into the Hominy Creek Park. There's a river right here is currently overflowing onto the road and it is blocked off. French Broad Outfitters is very much so underwater. Now, that was the day before Helene even hit. So again, is there something going on there? Well, there could be. I'm no expert. But it sure does look like it to me. You know, again, man, can we control the weather? I don't know. Again, I'm no expert, but everything I've read and seen, we've been able to do that for some time. So again, man, we, we, I think we need to at least hold the uh, possibility that we can do so. Um, but I'm going to show you guys, man, a couple of clips. And one is from the trucker that said, hey, look, there is no response from the government. They are sending anything out. And that is a typical watch. The people in North Carolina, you deserve to hear this. I'm a truck driver, all right? I have a 53 foot step deck. I've been trucking for about two and a half years. I have a YouTube channel, you can verify that on, Babyline Hotshot. Usually in a disaster situation, it is payday for truckers. We look for that hurricane, we look for that ice storm. There's generators coming to you. There from, uh, there's stuff coming out of military bases. There is excavators, skid steers, bulldozers, uh, tree, tree trimming equipment, pumps, like water pumps to pump water out of places that have been flooded. There's no loads on the load board coming to you within 125 miles of Asheville. It's called Truck Stop. This is where I find all my loads. Chicago, Illinois, up at the top, within 250 miles of Chicago is where I'm gonna pick up the second the second is the uh, destination. So it goes origin, destination, watch. See, drop off location. Let's do city. North Carolina, click it, boom. All right. These are all $1.40 a mile loads, $1.39. That was posted yesterday. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing. These are loads that, that you, you wouldn't even nobody's taking them they're just on the load board they've been on there since yesterday you can see right let's type in a different city that's from chicago let, let maybe tennessee maybe nashville is closer and they'd, they'd send resources from nashville tennessee nashville tennessee within 250 miles of nashville to asheville north carolina within 125 miles let's see there is that's it that's all the loads that's all the loads that are 28,000 pounds in life. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I mean, what the hell is going on here? I had brokers call me and tell me, Stu, have you seen any loads going to Asheville or like anywhere around the Carolinas, South Carolina, Georgia? Is there any like FEMA loads? There's none. Zero. He's been a broker for six years. And he's talking to other brokers. They're saying the same thing. What's going on, guys? You know, guys, man, there could be nothing. Nothing. 
but it's not the only one. Watch. Watch this. We picked up a Put it right here. flight of uh, pediatric medical supplies that were brought in um, and are going to North Asheville. We were sitting in the private portion of the airport and we got to overhear an awful lot. The Army pilots, the Navy pilots, hospital representatives, um, there was a lot of chatter. While we were there, a private jet landed and four FEMA representatives got off. Four. Four people off of a private jet. Come to find out, and you're not going to hear this, so let me tell you. Come to find out, Mission Hospital was told, a private hospital, that they are going to go ahead and be the morgue center for body recovery. All of the Army Chinook helicopters you're seeing flying overhead, they are doing body recovery. FEMA said, and, and you can take this as a direct quote, said that they are too tied up at the border to send any more representatives. Yeah, at the border. So anyhow, I guess border control trumps whatever's going on here. So they told Mission Hospital they are not sending refrigerated trucks so that they can stack the bodies up. And we also overheard that whatever fatality numbers you are hearing, and this is a quote, go ahead and add a couple of zeros. So FEMA's too busy with the border. A private hospital and the army are going to take over body recovery and private individuals with their private helicopters and their private planes are the ones who are flying in supplies. I was at Hangar 10, I was picking up supplies. There was a stack for the Cajun Navy. There was a stack that looked like it was ASPCA. These are all being sent by private individuals. FEMA is doing nothing. Go ahead. But again, we gotta have compassion. Compassion for the people at the southern border. You know, again, guys, I'm not saying that we don't only have compassion. Compassion. But the fact of the matter is, we need to have compassion for our people first. Again, this is our country. And if we're leaving people behind that are tax-paying citizens of this country, we are doing something wrong. You know, if we're, if we're spending money over and over again on people that are coming illegally from over the border. And again, we're, we're leaving behind our people here. Yeah, we're doing something wrong. We are doing something wrong. But I'm going to play you guys a clip from Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck was in uh, Western North Carolina, I believe Thursday. I'm not sure. But it was towards the end of last week. And um, again, he saw the FEMA response, what they're doing. He saw things. Here's his words. Watch. He said, I've got a field here. You can use that as a landing place. There were there were helicopters coming in and, and going out. And the government tried to shut them down. And said, you know... Uh, this is uh, the, 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 nobody from the FAA is involved here. Uh, you're going to have to shut this down. And Adam Smith, who's retired special forces, who was running it, he was like, really? Yeah. You know what you're going to do? You're going to leave because I have another helicopter landing and one taking off in a few minutes. Uh, they were just pissed. You know, you're not here. If you had all of the assets here, if you had called one of the, oh, I don't know, many forts, bases, and special forces that are sitting on bases in North Carolina, maybe we would shut this down, but you're not sending anything to help people, so get off our land. That was a common theme uh, yesterday. Guys, can we control the weather? Can we? You know, I, again, I'm no expert. I don't know. But 
it seems to me that everything I found has pointed to the fact that we can. And we've been able to do so for quite some time. But guys, I'm going to show you a clip from Alex Jones's show, his podcast, uh, InfoWars. And you guys can take from it what you want. Watch. We have had the technology to create, control, and steer hurricanes for decades. Project Cirrus is the first official attempt to modify a hurricane. It was run by General Electric with the support of the U.S. military. The official theory was that by changing the temperature outside the eyewall of a hurricane, which they did by seeding the clouds with various compounds such as silver iodide, a decrease in strong winds will result. On October 13, 1947, Project Cirrus targeted a hurricane heading out to sea. Approximately 180 pounds of dry ice was dropped into the clouds. The crew then reported a pronounced modification of the cloud deck, and the hurricane abruptly changed direction and made landfall near Savannah, Georgia. The public blamed the government Irving Langmuir, who pioneered General Electric's Atmospheric Research Department and admitted that the project was about learning how to weaponize the weather, also claimed the reversal of the hurricane had been caused by Project Cirrus, but the government denied it for 12 years. After a short delay, the project officially continued, and in 1965, Project Storm Fury had targeted Hurricane Betsy for seeding. On that day, the storm immediately changed direction and made landfall in southern Florida. Congress blamed it on Project Storm Fury, but the government claimed that the hurricane shifted before they ever had a chance to seed it. And after two months of congressional hearings, the project was allowed to continue. In 1997, U.S. Defense Secretary William Cohen admitted we have the technology to control the weather including earthquakes and volcanoes. The U.S. government has placed gag orders on employees of the National Weather Service. In October of 2012, after Hurricane Sandy weakened to a tropical storm, microwave imagery shows a thick red beam immediately followed by Sandy growing into a Category 1 hurricane and taking an unexplained left turn into New Jersey. Guys, man, can we control the weather? I don't know. I don't know if the government can do that. I really don't. But it it appears that it's possible. So again, we we have a problem. We have a definite issue. Number one, either we have a government that mistreats its own people when they're going through a, a disaster or there are a bunch of murdering, murdering thieves that um, are trying to take over land or trying to control an election or something. But either way, people have got to wake up. they got to pay attention to what's happening, to what is going on. Because again, man, this is our country. This is our country. And again, the folks that we pay to keep us safe, definitely, no matter how you cut it, they they don't have our best interest in mind. But if you guys would, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks. You son of a You son of a You son of a